On November 9th, 1989, the day of infamy, wherever the United States became the world's sole superpower. In fact, this was the fall of the collapse and the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Now, why this was so essential to the fall to the Soviet Union is well, after the Berlin, after the notion that the Berlin Wall was becoming uh, was going to become collapsed, many of the Soviet Union members began to question the legitimacy of Soviet Union as a hegemonic government, and there and thus in turn, as a result of the Soviet Union's legitimacy being questioned, within the next few years, they eventually collapsed and dissipated to absolutely nothing therefore leaving the United States as the world's sole superpower. Now, up until present day, there has been this notion that the United States still remains as the sole superpower. But on the contrary to this, many analysts are now arguing the, the fact that China, whose GDP and economy is growing at an astronomical rate, has now, super, has now succeeded the United States as the world's sole superpower. In fact, as the New York Times article goes on to explain, back on January 13th of this year, that China, that um, where it pointed out that Prime Minister of Britain David Cameron stated in a recent interview that he feels as though China has now surpassed the United States as the world's most influential nation. However, despite this statement, many people feel as many people feel as though the United States still remains as its sole superpower, forcing us to pose today's question: Is America still the sole superpower? And luckily, the answer is a resounding yes because of the fact that we lead every other nation in almost every fundamental aspect. But first, we can examine the fact that despite this global financial crisis, the United States still has the world's largest economy. Second, the United States has the world's most authoritative and strongest military. And third, finally, but perhaps most importantly, the United States has the most political leverage when it comes to international organizations. But initially, we must examine the fact that despite this Goal in international financial crises, the United States remains as the world's largest economy. Now, having one of the, if not largest economies, is essential to having the superpower and influential status that the United States still has. Now, it is important to analyze, to understand, uh, point out the fact that yes, the United States has suffered the repercussions of this world financial crisis. However, as Paul Krugman goes on to explain in his book, the depression, the return of depression economics that the United States will simply end this business cycle in the sense that, well, there are times of recession and times of economic growth. And luckily for us, we are in that time and period of economic growth. Now, on top of this fact, we can also look to the CIA World Factbook, which explains that the United States GDP, or gross domestic product, which determines your power of the economy, currently stands at $14.12 trillion, next to China's mere $4.84 trillion. So, not only does the United States triple China's GDP, but we also are in a period of economic growth. Now, yes, China is having the, has the possibility of, su of succeeding the United States as the world's largest economy. However, that simply won't be for the next few decades. But second, we can also examine the essential fact that the United States has the most authoritative and influential military within the international community. Now, seeing that the United States has the world's largest economy, Clearly, they allocate a substantial amount of funding to their military and defense spending program. In fact, as the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace goes on to explain, back on March 13th of this year, that the United States currently allocates $686 billion annually to their military defense spending budget. And therefore, and, and on the contrary to this, China only allocates $68 billion to their military defense budget. So clearly, we can see that we, su that we succeed and both the military aspects, but also more importantly, the economic aspect, which allows us to allocate these substantial amounts of funding to our military program. And as a result of us having the world's most authoritative military, then we can clearly um, influence several other nations into doing things that we want to do. In fact, as a result of this, we can be classified as a superpower because whenever one defines super, a superpower, they have not only sovereignty over their own nation, but they also have a, a great amount of political and military leverage within other nations, which is why, in fact, in that same Carnegie Endowment of International Peace article, it explains that we have bases in almost in um, over 95% of the countries within the world. So clearly, China, a nation that is, in fact, increasing economically speaking, however, they aren't increasing militarily speaking, with their only funding at $68 billion annually, so clearly we exceed them in that aspect. And third, finally, but perhaps most importantly, we can also look at the fact that the United States has the most amount, a greatest amount of political leverage 
and within major international organizations. Now, ranging from the United Nations to the World Trade Organization to OPEC, we can see that the United States has played a fundamental role in shaping who our citizens are today. And in fact, for an organization such as OPEC, which involves oil and, petro and um, petroleum, uh, we can see that the United States has have utilized their political leverage to better their own citizens. And as a result, the United States can be classified as a superpower because as a result of them having this political leverage, they, they are the determinant for several ass outcomes within the entire international community. So, when we reevaluate today's question, is America still the sole superpower? The answer yet again is a resounding yes because of the fact that we lead every other nation in almost every fundamental aspect. But first, we examine how the United States, despite this global financial crisis, has the world's largest economy. Moreover, the United States has the world's most authoritative and strongest military. And third, finally, but perhaps most importantly, the United States leads, uh, has the most amount of political leverage within nearly every major international organization. So clearly, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the United States did become the sole superpower, and that, and that fact still remains today.